bloodshot. It's the Christmas one. Christmas one. Oh, the Christmas bloodshot. Yeah, because it is the season for some bloodshot. Don't, don't you ever say that to me ever again. Okay, I'll just sing it. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Oh, my gosh. Are your branches. But while your, no, season is, while your season is October, my season is of December. It's only because your birthday's there. Yeah, it's also a meaningful holiday for me. Okay, just, with, fine. just with family. I mean, yeah, I can see that. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So welcome back. It's been a hot minute. A very hot minute. Yeah, like... I was thinking, so I think the last episode that we did was before the first week of November? No, the first week no, of November. No, it was the first week of November. Because after that, the week after that, you had your, um, you just started training for your new job, which congrats yep. on that. Thanks. And, and then the week after that um, was uh, Keys' birthday trip. So I, I was out in Arkansas enjoying that. Highly recommend that. Um, for anybody who wants to take a fun vacation, go check out Eureka Springs. It's very touristy. But oh, I love fun. Eureka Springs. I really yeah, I so, love so Eureka Springs. Had, had, had never been and was like, okay, yeah, let's go. And I really liked it. It just has so many fun little shops around town. Um, so, and, and the week after that was Thanksgiving. So we're going to see if I can do something about that. With what? The Echo? No, it was lagging really bad. I don't know what's yeah. going on. I'll have to clean it up. I mean, honestly, this is probably the first time I've been able to get on my computer and probably since the last time we did the show. Well, we, you did some designs, right? Yeah, you, that's about it. Computer, yeah. So, so you've been using not the audio video side of it, but more the designing side of it. So, yeah, it's it's been probably some time since you checked all that stuff. But it has me set for like headphones. Huh. Interesting. You don't have any of the heady phones. I do not. So that's why I was like, what? Oh, and then and then last week I was at the hospital for um, Keys' aunt having a baby. Yeah, baby. Yes, who's actually in the other room right now. Oh my gosh, you have a cute baby in the other room? Yes. Have a super cute baby in the other room. Stop it. He's super cute. It's a friend. I don't know why it keeps wanting to do headphones. I don't know why either. <laughs> Can you change it? I changed it, but it's still like really laggy. Like, why do I always have these issues? I don't know. It's just not fun. I want something or another with yours. Hmm. He's just getting all the baby cuddles. All of the baby cuddles! Yeah. She she came in with him before the show. She was holding him. I was like, ah, so cute. That's adorable. I love that. I love that. I'm going to have to, like, take the uh, sound bar out of my room and, like, hook it up to my computer because this is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you having to deal with it from your monitor now? Is that what you switched it back to? Or are you still trying to Bluetooth that speaker? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with the speaker. Um, it's worked so well for this long. Yeah. And now it's like every time you talk through that speaker, it's like your words start overlapping. Mm -hmm. So it's just all laggy. So I'll just have to do it through the, the, the monitor right now. Gotcha. Which I wish the monitor was louder, but what am I going to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I thought we'd come back to some uh, conspiracies and movies and conspiracies about movies. All the above, please. All of the above. It's a mess. Um, from what you've mentioned, it sounds like quite a mess. So much of a mess that I had to get the right shirt for. 
Say that again. I said so much of a mess that I had to get the right shirt for it. Oh, oh, I see that. Yeah, yeah. I love when I surprise Jeff with, uh, hey, this is what we're talking about tonight. And he goes, okay. And he's ready. Like 20 minutes later, he's like, I got the shirt. I got the comic books. He's probably wearing some undies right now. <laughs> you know, be of the DC variety, probably some Batmans. That, that's about the only piece of clothing that I do not have some kind of theme version of. What? Yeah, I, I have it in the socks and in the t-shirts and as we've seen, even in the hats. Uh, but in the boxer variety, nope, it's just straight Fruit of the Loom base colors. That I know that needs to be fixed. I feel like that's a missed opportunity for you, bud. Yeah, I know. And here's the thing. I'll see them all the time, like, you know, at Walmart. And I'm like, ooh, those are nice. I'm going to go buy my pair of George. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The only superhero undies I have are Spider-Man's. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, Keys, Christmas is coming up. This man needs some superhero undies. <laughs> That's what this man needs. Do not make me be the friend that buys my friend Spider-Man undies. Please don't, bud. Please don't. I'm doing it now. Fuck it. Okay, we're putting a poll on Facebook. Should Max buy Jeff some superhero undies? Oh, man. Let us know. I'll put it on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we are going to be talking about a certain conspiracy. I want to know if you've ever heard about this conspiracy. Okay. It's called the Curse of Superman. Um, I mean, I've heard of a lot of different conspiracy theories evolving around the Superman movies. Um, just actors that have played them that gotten injured, uh, films that have just failed due to things around Superman and how he's supposed to be the start of a lot of DC uh, universe stuff and is usually the reason why it falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, do you remember who the first ever Superman on in live action was? Um, are we talking about way back before Christopher Reeves, or are we talking about the Reeves films? Way before Reeves. Um, mm. We're talking about like 1940s Superman. I, I have seen those ones. A long time ago, because they had them on Turner Classic Movie, um, and I ended up watching them, but I cannot off the top of my head tell you who was the actor that played those. The only thing I do know about it is he was on an episode of I Love Lucy. Yeah, so it's Kirk Allen. Okay. Kirk Allen uh, was in, uh, he appeared as Superman in a lot of different, um, like, like, serial show-ish. Right. Uh, he came back as Lois Lane's dad in the 1978 Superman. Okay. And then nothing else happened for him. Like, that was it. Like, that was his shining moment, and he died. Nobody knew who he was. Okay. So they're saying that, that he is a victim to the curse of Superman, that he played Superman, which is a highly sought-after role, and nothing came of it because of the curse. Everybody else just sees him now as... Superman, so he can't go play as any other kind of film because right. people just think, "Oh, Superman." Yep. Um, then it goes on to Lee Quigley. Do you know who Lee Quigley is? No, I do not know who Lee Quigley is. Lee Quigley is the baby who played Kal El in 1978 Superman. Okay. <laughs> so technically, he played Superman just it, as an infant. It was baby Superman. Baby in, Superman. in the first Superman um, movie, right? And he died at the age of 14. Okay. So they're saying that that is the youngest victim of, of the, the curse. Superman, Superman curse? Okay. Yep. So it's one of those, like, anybody involved with the whole Superman thing, something bad happens to them? Yeah, they're saying that either, you know, some sort of horrible accident, death, or just total bombing of a career. Right. And I'll get to the point of why this is relevant today, but we're going to go through a couple more. Okay. So George Reeves, you already mentioned him. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he was uh, 1951 uh, Superman with oh, the yeah. Superman and the Mole Men. Yeah. That was his first. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, went on to Adventures of Superman. Right. Uh, so after that, and this is where it gets to, like, career ending because nobody else could see him as anything other than Superman. Right. Like, that's all he was good for. Right. And, and once you get past a certain prime... Right. Nobody wants to see a 50-year-old Superman. Yep. Um, and then right before he was going to be married, Reeves died. Mm. Like, just literal days before his wedding. Okay. Um, Sad to hear it. Yeah, I mean, what really made me mad about all of that is it was ruled a suicide. And there was like, oh, because he can't get any more work because he's Superman. He killed himself. Um, but there's well, like a lot of... If you're getting ready to get married, that huh? seems... If you're getting ready to get married, that seems very conflict -y. Yeah. And so he he's another victim of Curse of Superman. So then we have... Uh, let's see here. And then it, it goes on, like, so I'm reading an article as well because I wanted to touch up on it. So it's uh, how the Superman curse affected Christopher Reeve. Right, and that's the Reeve I'm talking about, the one who fell off the horse um, and paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah. And, like, best thing is he was Superman for the Superman movies of the 70s. Yep, 1978. Right. And then in 1995 is when... The falling and right, and then it, that became a whole thing because it's oh well we can't have anybody, you know, replace him. Yep, he was Superman. Like he that was, was Superman, Superman, right? So uh, Dean Kane, you remember Dean Kane? Oh yeah, yeah. Whenever he did, uh, was it Lois and Clark that he did? Yes, he played Superman. I mean, I didn't really watch Lois and Clark. I knew more Dean Kane from Ripley's Blue. Yeah, I mean, I remember seeing Dean Kane after uh, Superman and Lois was done with, and he was doing like Ripley's Believe It or Not on television. Yeah. Um, so nothing really happened to him, but it's just like right after his stunt as Superman, like everything just kind of came to a screeching halt. Right. Like, like I said, like the only thing I, I didn't, I didn't know him from Lois and Clark. I only knew him from. Ripley's Believe It or Not. But you never really, I think he was in a few other straight to D, you know, straight to VHS or four TV only movies. But that was it. And he and here's the thing, he wasn't a movie Superman. He was a TV series yep. Superman. That's right. Do you know who Brandon Routh is? No. He played Superman. That's was it. He the, wait, was he the return of Superman Superman? I believe so. The one that had just the one movie, yeah, that was supposed to be like the, like, what, what was there was four Superman movies, right? Before that one, I mean mainstream, the, the four that Reeves did, or three. I'll pull it up. I am not good on my Superman knowledge, guys. I'm sorry to tell you. So he was. Uh, he did uh, Superman Returns. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. And then he kind of just did a, a lot of... Um, well, he did uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow. As that Superman? I don't know. Or Maybe. Superboy, possibly? Uh, but then he did like a lot of like straight to DVD and a lot of like Hallmark Holiday specials. Mm. So, screeching halt of a career. And then we have Tom Welling. Who, again, was not a movie Superman. He was a show Superman. And that's from Smallville. And that's when he was in Smallville. And I think he's had a pretty good career. Overall, uh, yeah. Cheaper by the dozen. Uh, I think he's on some, like, NCIS or something now. Um, but it took him a while from teenage Tom Welling to where to, he is to now. Where he is now. Right. Right. You really didn't see much in between... Like, what, Smallville ended in what? 12? 2012? I want to say, ah. Uh, or later, like 2015. 
No, no, it had. I was thinking like eleven or twelve. Okay. So yeah, that, that's a ten-year gap, and yeah, he's he's done a few roles, and yeah, he's he's kind of again big on TV now, but nothing major. Yep. And now we have um, our current Superman. Well, it get, it gets even weirder than that. So it doesn't only affect the people who have played Superman; it affects the people who have played in Superman. Okay. So uh, let's talk about, um, let's see, where's her name? Because I know her. The one that played Chloe Sullivan in Smallville. Uh, Allison Mack. Okay, okay. I, I, I was I was trying to run through actresses' names that were in Smallville. Yeah, I mean, they, they go into, like, Marlon Brando, who had uh, a lot of... A lot of tragedy in his life um and they you know that's like oh yep it goes to superman but um right at that point you're doing you know six degrees of kevin bacon yeah but i mean like he did have a lot of misfortune in his life i mean uh his the, there was the the shooting it mentions here and then there's his daughter's suicide mm -hmm. but i mean can we say that that's because of the curse i don't know I mean, it, Brando played in so many films, and there's a lot of, as you know, you know this, I know this. There's a lot of conspiracies when it comes to a lot of films that had curses around it, and Brando's been in a few of those films. Yeah, and then Mac, who is uh, in prison, I think, still currently, mm. um, for being in a sex cult. That's a odd thing to be in a prison for. But yeah. I, I do remember reading about that. Yes. About like her involvement into that cult and her so, role in it. But that does bring me to the current Superman. Okay. Henry Cavill. Yep. Cavill, who did The Witcher? He did. He did. Um, he's been in a few other films. Yeah. He um, was he, uh, even he before he was Holmes in Enola Holmes. Right. Um, even before he did um, Man of Steel, which, good Superman movie, by the way. One of my favorite Superman movies. Um, had already been in a few film and TV roles before that point. So he was an unknown who jumped in this role. So you and heard that, last week how he is no longer doing The Witcher, correct? I had heard that he's no longer doing The Witcher because of a possible upcoming Superman film. No. So from his uh, interview, he said that he's not happy with the way the show was heading. So he was leaving. Okay. Um, Liam Hemsworth, I think, is taking over, which I think is a horrible choice, but whatever. Um, I mean, this man is a huge Witcher fan, like back like in book form. Okay. So for him and, to be and like I had her, and I had heard of Hemsworth was taking over for Witcher. Yeah. So he and, and you know it could have been because of you know his Superman roles and, and things like that. He did uh spoiler alert did appear as Superman at the end of Black Adam. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, "Hey, here's Superman again." Right. I bet. But as of Tuesday, Cavill will no longer be Superman. Do you think it had to do with him walking off as the Witcher, where they now see him as a, a, a production studio might now see him hard to work with? No, it. I think it's more of the fact that uh, James Gunn and Safran uh, have decided to reboot DC Studios. So... It, it makes me wonder where does that leave? Not even this. I mean, are, are, are we now going to go to with them rebooting it? Where does that put us with who's our now current Batman? So I can give you some insight. Okay. Ready? So uh, what would be just name one movie that you'd be excited for that could be coming out of the DC universe? that i have heard rumor of rolling out or, or that you'd be excited for either one that oh 
out of the DC universe. As crazy as this might sound, I would really love for them to do Green Lantern proper. Okay, so let, let's talk about like what you would think that they would do rather than what you would hope they would do. Okay, what I think they would do with them doing a reboot is they're no, going, no, take the reboot out. Take the reboot, take reboot out. out. So it's like, what's their next step if I'm them? Well, what would you think would be their next step before you were here, the reboot? Okay, well, I would hope that they would unscrap the Bat uh, Batwoman movie because I heard that that was going to be a great one and take it off of that step. That's been taken off. What's that right. one? Um, Black Adam did really well, but I'm not sure where they're going with it. Done. They're not revisiting it ever again. Right. Which is a stupid one because you have Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who is essentially Hollywood gold right now. How you don't already have three films set up for him after that first one is beyond me. So not only that, Wonder Woman 3 is cut. Right, because they did Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 84. Yep. Right. They were working on a third. It's now cut. Right. I mean... Th no more Aquamans. Um, I mean, they did, the, you know, they did that whole The Batman. Which, well, they're not, they're not even touching that. They're like, we're not touching right, that. Right, I wouldn't have either, because I did not care for that one. You didn't care for that one. Not Listen, many... Don't say that too loud. I hear that when you say that, Sean comes out the woodwork and loses his shit. Oh, Yeah. He, he literally, like, we had a, a probably a good hour-long discussion about how good that movie actually is and how I had to give it a second chance. So I literally went and rewatched it. And I do have a, a deeper appreciation for the Batman. Now that I understand more of where it's coming from, I still just don't like Robert Pattinson. Um, I don't like Pattinson. I don't like that before we get any action, we have to sit through an entire 45 minutes to an hour of useless filler. Yep. At the very beginning of a movie. Yes, I like a good storyline, but if you're giving me a Batman film, give me some action. Don't give me some brooding for a half hour. Yeah. So um, Aquaman cut. No more Jason Momoa. Right. You you now don't have The Rock or Momoa. You, you got rid of two great Hollywood stars right off your bat. Yep. Hey, Man of Steel not, 2 was cut. Not to mention Wonder with Wonder Woman, with Godot, right? Yep. Yeah. You're just. And then Cavill with Superman. You're just like, oh, yeah, we have all these big name stars, but we don't know what to do with them. And we don't know how, because, I mean, that means that, I mean, you just took if, if they're they, they should do a, a third um, another Justice League movie. That's also cut. Right. Um, they were in talks about I had heard, uh, I had heard I early, 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 early talks about possibly doing a cyborg film slash making Titans no longer just be a TV show and actually giving the Teen Titans their own film with Cyborg. Kind of a pre, like, before he's joined Justice League. Yep. Which, now that they're going to be doing that, I don't see that happening. Yeah, so they're, they're calling it DC Genesis, where they're basically going back from, to scratch, you know? Okay, so what what is their idea since... Literally, they just did reboots of so many of these characters not even all that long ago. Um, they, they, they are keeping their future baby uh, pretty tight-pocketed right now of, of what they're going to do. But the only thing they have seen is they're starting all over. They're recasting everything. Um, so... It says here, part of the plan could entail a truly fresh start and having no baggage from any previous regimens as they set about resetting how DC movies and shows are made. Uh, that, however, does not take into account the possible success of movies like Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which has a horrible movie poster. Yeah. I just didn't... I didn't care for Shazam. It just myself. That's oh, weird. And then Blue Beetle, that's supposed to come out in August. I like Blue Beetle, and again, that would be a good one if they were leaning more towards the Titans. Because Blue Beetle is a part of one of the groups of Teen Titans. If they are going to uh, not touch Batman and like keep it as it is, they have talked about uh, possible spinoffs like the Penguin. Okay. Okay. Um, I think 
if they're going to do a spinoff, P1 isn't the worst one to go with. Um, I think that's a horrible idea. I mean, like... Well, I only if they... Only, an idea. I mean, they already did it with the Joker. We've already seen that one. Yeah, but that wasn't... We've already seen it with Catwoman. Yeah, but again, I mean, let's be honest. What made Catwoman a good movie? Halle Berry. Halle Berry's ass. Yeah. Uh, Halle Berry's ass in leather. But as far as, hey, does this follow any of the Catwoman comic lines? Not at all. Not at all? No. So, and maybe, like... Maybe they can go back and like restart and be like, hey, remember all that shit we fed you like for the last 45 years? I mean, they did that in the comics in a way with the new 52. Yeah. With, you know, the Green Lantern running through all dimensions and converting them all into one. And instead of having 137 different comics that came out every month, it was 52. But then again, on that point, all that they did is they still kept their strong 52 of them. So you still kept Batman. You still kept Wonder Woman. You still kept Superman. You still kept all those big names that had been around. For, you still kept The Flash. Yeah. I just don't. I just. I don't know, man. I heard this news about DC and I was just like. Man. Because I, I, I mean, you can go back a couple episodes and uh, listen to us talk about how I believe that Green Lantern wasn't a horrible movie. Right. It had so much potential and it could have went somewhere if they would have done it right. Right. And how, I, I mentioned the same thing to where it's not the fact that it's a bad film. It's that they went with a bad plot line for the first Green Lantern film. They should have gave more origin story. They could have even went right as day, darkest night. Instead of putting him right into the middle of uh, Lantern Corps. Yep. Yeah. Um, Hush. You are not a guest on this show. Have, okay, so Flash. We've only seen him in Flash the TV series, which solid TV series, by the way. And he was in Justice League but not a huge part in Justice League. So, I mean, he, he's one of the core of, J, of the JL, so I think that would be a good one to actually make as a movie. You could do it right as a film. The problem would be doing it right. I think that's where... And, I mean, like they, they brought uh, Gunn and Saffron in here in October, I believe, mm -hmm. to head basically the, the superhero conversion squad of how the TV shows and movies are now going to be run for DC Studios. Right. It's all now ran by the same people. The showrunners yeah. and the production and all that, it's no longer going to be shows doing their own kind of things, i.e. Uh, Supergirl and Heroes of Tomorrow, Legends of Tomorrow, and... Um, sorry here just for a moment and titans and them just each having their own little thing that they're doing and it's going to be now like them all saying yep all the same mindset all the same movement forward. which i mean there's a part of me that gets it but i think one of the great things from marvel has been the fact of they can do their shows without having to have oh this is going to lead to a movie necessarily they can just have it for what it is. Like, this is what it is, and this is what we have, and this is all well, great, and fine, because right. we, we know what's happening. Like, they're right. Here's the, thing. Very easily. Here's the thing. Like, you, it, it now feels more like if you watch the shows, you know more what's happening in the movies. I.e., you don't have to watch, you don't necessarily have to watch Loki to get what's happening in Wanda, um, in Doctor Strange, or, I mean, that's true. or or in Thor: um, Love and Thunder, does it that's help? Movie. Does it help if you've watched those films? Yeah, to a point because you feel like you understand the wider Marvel universe. Well, anything but not requiring that was a horrible movie. <laughs> it wasn't great. I'll give it that. 
the best part about that movie was the goats. I think what a lot of people and you 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 can it should have been just 80s actiony film to the nth degree, filled to the you know, filled to the top with so much Thor being Thor. I don't think you can do that mid mid saga. And that's the problem. You can't do that mid saga, but that's what people wanted mid saga. I don't think that's what people wanted mid saga. Because if they I, wanted that mid saga, that they might have actually liked it. But the, I mean, the point is, like, you have serious movie, serious movie, serious movie. Your laughing movie was Guardians of the Galaxy, and yes, Thor got to be a part of that. I think that's what also kind of burned it a little bit. Is that while well, yes, this was a Thor movie, they had enough of the feel of Guardians of the Galaxy to it. With their stuff that they're like, yeah, let's still do it lighthearted like a Guardians of the Galaxy instead of a serious how your typical Thor movie should be. I think they should have just named that movie Guardians of the Galaxy featuring Thor. Right. Because it just, it set me off. Like, I'm just like, no, that's not a Thor movie to me. No, no. But I don't know. See, I think, and like, what do I know, right? I, I, I'm not in the industry or anything like that. Marvel is dominating superhero movies. Oh, yeah, for sure. 110%. You know what they're not dominating? Mm. Shows. A part of me said uh, was to disagree with that just because, again, how well third ones have done. Yeah, let's push She-Hulk out of the way and say, yeah. But all the other ones that they've made into shows... I would say have been solid odds. But when I... I mean, I, I think they're solid shows, but I don't I mean, think they're dominating I mean, shows the way they're dominating movies. Well, they're not dominating shows in the sense that they're not on a channel service and then later put on to a streaming service. The thing is, you're not seeing it on the Disney Channel, you know, on a Friday night and then Saturday morning, the episode comes out onto Disney+. Plus. It's just all do- dropped onto Disney+. Plus. So if you don't have that streaming service and you're just staying with traditional cable, you don't know anything about these. And you're not I mean, getting I do have the streaming services and I still don't know about them, even though I'm a huge Marvel fan. I, I I just don't watch them. But do you know who makes really good cutting edge superhero shows? Mostly CW, I'm not gonna lie about that. that. However, so you put this on here and I couldn't agree more. The, the the four, five, I think possibly six. If you go with the four and then if you add Punisher and then Defenders as six separate series, then, yeah, that was solid. Dare, the, the two seasons of Daredevil were great. Jessica Jones's seasons were great. Luke Cage's first season was solid. Didn't care much for anything after that. Well, um, let's, let's go back further than that. Smallville was a knock out of the park oh for sure it was good arrow amazing show yeah i liked gotham gotham okay so the one bad flop they had was batgirl i'm not gonna lie like batwoman whatever it was right. it was flash. flash solid one even even supergirl was a pretty good movie yeah I mean, if they were to concentrate their efforts better into shows and stop trying to make blockbuster movies, they would dominate. I can agree with that sentiment. So, so what do you think that they should not do movies and just focus on making really great shows? Yeah, for now. Because let's be honest, how many trash DC movies have we seen? Oh yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so you had Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? But but here's the thing. If Snyder had never moaned and groaned and complained and the fan base hadn't moaned and groaned and complained about the cut that we got of um, Justice League, we would have never known that Snyder's cut was as good as it was. I mean, but to be honest with you, and I think it was good, but I literally think there was only like – Oh, you fuck off. We've talked about this, and I'm sure you've had this discussion with Jacob. Jacob's all about the animated DC. I mean, I understand that, but what do you mean DC has always been crap? 
Have you not seen Arrow? Have you not seen Flash? Have you not seen Gotham? Have you not seen Smallville? What? I know he's seen Smallville. Right. I'm gonna. I have to go downstairs and fight him. Now, I will say the live action DC movies have been trash. Have been trash. Uh, yeah, just the movies. movies. The movies. There, those. The good ones are few and far between. There's been uh, the the um, the Batman trilogy, the Christian Bale Batman trilogy. Eh. The, the, what made those movies for me was Heath Ledger as the Joker. Yeah, yeah, and, and I like I liked Hardy as Bane. Yeah, yeah. They they got really good villains for those roles. However, I feel like Jacob just joined the conversation like midway. <laughs> we were already saying that. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. He's exactly right. Like, I wouldn't call them exceptions. I would literally say DC needs to focus on TV. Um, well, because the thing is, like, okay, you take Smallville, you take Gotham, you take Arrow, you take Legends of Tomorrow, and what, what makes those good is... One, they're not trying to blockbuster a bunch of stars into there and give you action, 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 action all the time. This needs to be a, a major film. They can stretch their idea out two, three, four seasons. Right, there's and character you, developing. They fall in love with right, these right. And, and, and that's what's great about comics in that way. You're not getting, I mean, you can, but um, usually when you get a comic, you're getting an issue of it. You're not getting the volume of you know, oh, here's the first seven chapters of this, which you can buy those, but the people who are reading them are reading them, getting them every month, every other month, and reading them in this and allowing the story to be stretched over that amount of time, which is what um, is enjoyable about those. Right. So, like, let, let, then let's go back to Arrow. If let's take Arrow, okay. Mm -hmm. If they would have been like, all right, guys, another superhero movie, we're going to do the Green Arrow. Yep. Here we go. We're going to make this a blockbuster movie. Oliver Queen, boom, boom, boom. Arrows flying, shit happening, right? Right. It would have been Green Lantern all over again. Oh, 100%. Because cause you know where they would have taken it right off the bat. Uh, either were... 45 minutes of backstory and then some fighting and then an unresolved ending. Or yep. they would have just been like, here he is. He's already the Arrow. Exactly. They would have given you one of those two. And neither one of those are what gets butts in seats because you're either left unresolved with the hope. And here's the thing, here's the difference with, between Marvel and DC. With Marvel, you know if they unresolve a story, you're probably going to get a resolution eventually because they have the studio set up. They can throw it in five other movies. You don't get that with DC because we see them doing reboots after reboots after reboots. Right. And, like, Marvel does the same thing, but, okay, with Spider-Man. Yeah. But they tied that in in the last Spider-Man movie. Right. Exactly. Did you ever watch Howard the Duck? Yes. It's such a cheesy one-off movie. It's so good. But I love we, that. I love that he's in Guardians of the Galaxy and plays his cameo roles. Yeah, like I mean, uh, yeah. But if if they would have made Green Lantern a series, like they did Smallville. Oh yeah. I and get, and get had him grow and learn these things, get better in his abilities, fight some lower level people, learn more about it, not even worry about the core until like at least season three. Yep. And towards the end of season three, do it that yep. way. Oh yeah, you you would have had a great Green Lantern show, because then also you wouldn't have to be relying every episode on CG. Right, but not only that. Like I believe that if they would have like taken the time and actually done character developing in shows, right? Mm -hmm. That let's say they get, we get five solid seasons of Green Lantern. Yeah. Then we do a Green Lantern movie. Mm -hmm. That directly ties in with the show. Right. Then season six opens up and you, you can make that like a side thing there where you didn't have to see it to understand what's happening from six on out. There is a good thing and bad thing about that. 
what you have to do with you hope for on a show is that you put the movie out right when it's at its peak. Yep. We saw that happen with the Simpsons movie to where the Simpsons movie had already gone way past its peak and said, well, we might as well do a movie now. We've already done everything else. Let's do it with South Park. Well, no, South Park did it at the right time. You really think so? Like South Park was on for like 10 years before they made a movie. Right, and I would say within the first three seasons, it was kind of a small, where they put that time slot at. It didn't have a lot of, it had a certain fan base, but it didn't have a mainstream fan base. Then by season four, you run about four through seven, you start to get that mainstream fan base. I would have probably ran that show, I probably would have tried to get the movie out by seven or eight, which is when I think they started working on it, and then it took them two years. So whenever they initially had the idea of, yeah, let's make a movie, was the right time, and then it kind of just ripened. But I still think when it came out, it still came out at a much better time than the Simpsons movie, or, and as crazy as this sounds, because I absolutely love Bob's Burgers, and I love the movie, it just came out after a lot of the fan base had started to say, it's hit its peak. Where do we go from here? There's not much... This is just retellings now. But I mean, they they could have... Okay, so like picking the right time to do the movie would have been great. But like, let's say they did a couple seasons, uh, you introduce Raj Al Ghul a little bit, and then they release the movie about something that was in the past that was touched on in in the series. Okay. And it further explained this, and then you have a blockbuster hit. Right, right. You know, yeah. like, like his five years on on the island, basically, instead of hundreds of flashbacks. Right. Now, um, a shows that kind of do it that I find interesting, that do it s- s- kind of tongue-in-cheek in that way, are animes. Naruto's notorious for it, of just releasing a movie, like four seasons, release a movie. And that movie, while really, really good, it has nothing to do at all with all what's happening in the story. Like you said, it could be an extension of a mission that we've never got talked about. And in the end, it doesn't play anything to what's happening in the current. It's just a really fun side story in that way. But it still gets people who are fans of that in there. And if you're wanting to introduce somebody to the anime without having to have them sit through a tournament arc or a really long arc you can throw that one on there and they can just enjoy it for the animation style and for some of the action that they'll see on the tv yeah and and, okay i can i can agree with that but it it just makes my point stronger right right but you couldn't do that with i don't think you could do that with a dc film if you decided to do the whole just focus on the tv series and then once we have that firmly established let's do a movie and then get back to I mean, I think they could. I think they could. There's there's some exceptions to that. I really do think they could because Ra's al Ghul, like that whole thing could have just been a movie. Agreed. And he could have like had appearances on the show and it would have kept everything more exciting. But I mean, like that there was eight years of Arrow. So obviously they did something good. Right. You know? You know, The Flash. I think The Flash is like two seasons behind Arrow, I believe. I think something like that. Um, it was decent. I mean, like, honestly, the only... Well, how, how, many se- how many seasons did Smallville one. have? Huh? How many seasons did Smallville have? Oh, either 10 or 12. Right. I, I'm i pretty sure Gotham had seven or eight. And they could have kept going. Gotham could have easily kept going. 10 for... Was that for Smallville? Smallville. So, yeah, that's a show that they did something right. And if you think about it in that kind of terms, that's 10 seasons of just young Superman. That's and why I think they, they could literally rebuild their image and let us have trust in them again if yeah. they did the shows and said, fuck the movies. Oh, right. I... I if if I if I felt like I could believe that DC and the production company would legitimately do that, let's say 
we're only going to be doing the TV shows. That is all of our focus is going to be put into making really, really well done DC comic TV shows. If, if they, I if I could trust that, that, if I could trust that, oh, I'd be down from 100 percent But I feel like they're gonna say that for about three years and then just get one of those, hey, we're doing really good on this side. Let's try to put out a film. But see, that's the problem. Like they won't stop focusing on the movies. Right. Just like like guns doing now, like up oh, now, forget all these movies. We're gonna make more movies. Right. No. Right, and that's Go the thing back is, to your formula of TV shows. Right, right, and that and that's the thing is his whole thing is we're just getting rid of all this. We're starting fresh. With what? You're you're gonna tell us the Superman story again? Again. You're gonna tell us the Batman story again? again. You're gonna tell us the Wonder Woman story again? Because here's the thing: you either you either do with what. You either go with a, a character that anybody, your casuals, are going to know who that character is right off the bat. Right. Or your second choice is to go with a character that is going to be obscure because there hasn't been a film made about them and hope that you just did it right. But if you're trying to start restart a franchise, if you're trying to restart this whole thing, Going with an obscure character and just doing a really good movie. Well, I mean, that's Black Adam. Right. But they're calling it quits. Right. They've already shown that. It's it's ridiculous. And that's now, not, if you if you would have introduced Black Adam on a TV series, mm-hmm. and then gave him his own spinoff. Right. If you would have put him on Legends of Tomorrow, I wouldn't even say on Legends of Tomorrow. Like. Um, have him okay super a uh, new superman show okay let's just say that okay superman you know fights black adam they give a little bit of depth mm-hmm. to black adam and everyone goes he's a bad guy but what about him right boom right. spin off right and it would be great like my wife is a prime example of this she freaking loves michael rosenbaum's lex luthor oh yeah Absolutely loves that man. If that came out as a TV series tomorrow, right? If they just Lex, she'd watch the shit out of it. Right. If they just released one called Luther, and it was if they just released one and called it Luther, and it was just him, and it was about more or less like the stuff he was doing before going into prison. Yeah, you got it. But not only that, like, and I just thought of another one that did not really do good. It was Superman and Lois, the one they just did with. Uh, that I can't think of his name. That was within this last year, right? Or it was, it was horrible. It was not good, and I'll tell you why. Superman's story has been done to death. Right. However, the story they did was a futuristic Superman with his kids. You went from literally Man of Steel era. Right. right. To skip everything in between, and now he has babies. Yep. Yeah. Now him and Lois uh, ha- have have their super dog and the kids, and yeah, you just jumped. There's the no middle story there. No. You just jumped. I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that half of Smallville was pre Luther doing that. So yeah, you could have. But but here's the thing: could we do that now? And just make it its own and still, instead of making it half of like a Smallville kind of thing? Yeah, you can I make it all work. You could. Right. Now, and now here's the other part of it. Something that you, you had mentioned. They're not doing a new Wonder Woman. They're not doing a new Aquaman. They're not doing a new um, uh, what's the they're not doing a new Justice League. Have you gotten around to watching it yet? No. I think Wakanda Forever is proof. It's a great example of why um, DC is still trying to make movies. Because of the success of something like a Wakanda Forever. From what I've heard of that movie, 
it's not doing that good. It's still when it when it, it's not getting the numbers that you would imagine, especially over you know. Um, it's not getting numbers, especially like compared to what the first one did. But a lot of films aren't getting that. I mean, I don't even think they made back what they spent on that movie. I think they will once it comes on, onto the streaming service. I mean, yes. But also, let's let's go back to the fact that that's Marvel. It is. Marvel isn't DC. DC cannot do what Marvel does. So that goes back to the beginning of this, right. where we said, let Marvel do the movies, because they're yeah. dominating. You're not going to be them. Right. You could beat them in the TV shows because Marvel, outside of Spidey and Friends on Disney Junior, and there's supposed to be another one coming out next year, and even the one that comes out next year is probably going to go to Disney Plus. If it goes anywhere, it might go to Disney XD, but it's more than likely just going to be at Disney Plus. But most of – okay, so most of the shows that Marvel's coming out with – aren't even like series they're they're limited series right right um, where they have an end game and it's going to last two or three seasons right and then right. they're going to move on to something else you get that with hawkeye it's yep. oh they're they're just trying to give you okay this guy's going to fade out and we're going to get female hawkeye she's going to be part of the new avengers right you get the so same like, thing with she an game. You, you get this almost same feeling with she hulk yep uh, oh god so, that was horrible yeah, but, but you still get this feeling of we're kind of bleeding away from Hulk and she's going to be part of this new Avengers. Yeah, we, ha we had to introduce her somehow so she could take over. Right, right. So so you're starting to get pieces of that. You get that with uh, Falcon and Witcher Soldier. Oh, this, like I said, limited series. Right. This is, this is enough to get you the here's why there's a new Captain America and this is why he's going to be it. I mean, I, I'm going... It, it, it's not something that's going to go run for five seasons, how we were talking about where how DC should run their production company with focusing on TV shows, with keeping those CW and CBS deals going. It's a, hey, just let us run show, just let us put some really good superhero shows, TV shows out there. The way I look at it, and maybe this isn't the same for you or some of the people that are watching, um, but I know it's true for me. I work at a movie theater. You do. I spend most of my time watching TV. Mm -hmm. Whether it be I'm re-watching Arrow, which I just did, or I'm re-watching Flash, which I also just did, or I'm re-watching Smallville, or, you know, I'm re-watching Gotham. Mm-hmm. I am spending most of my entertainment time watching TV. TV, right. You want to grab your audience again? You want to show them, look at these stories that were so amazing? Do it in a TV series. Yeah. DC should watch this video and then call us and because we have great ideas. Uh, I'm not sure which I would pitch as my first DC show, though. I mean... There's a part of me that says I already know what I would do, and that would just, hey, take the animated Teen Titans. That was oh, amazing. No, horrible. And try to make it live action, but I know how that would fall. And Teen I know how that would be true. I know how that would be looked at. Because Titans already exist, and they burned it. They burned that show. Just, But that's why I said if I did it, I would want for it to be more like the Teen Titans, not Teen Titans, no, the original Teen Titans cartoon which most of us in our generation, absolutely, if you talk about a Teen Titans film, that's the one, like, cartoon, that's, yes. Exactly, that's what I was going to say, like, not go, because that was horrible. Yeah, yeah, no, the original Teen Titans. I heard Titans was really good, though. Huh? I heard Titans was really good. I've heard that Titans is a well-done storyline, just not cast as most people would hope. Okay, okay, I can see that. I mean, that's what I mean, they, 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 they I feel like, from, from what I've heard, because I haven't seen Titans, from what I've read about on different people's reviews on YouTube and just reading different people's reviews on it, uh, the biggest thing for it would be that they did Deathstroke right. And I'm like, okay, awesome. They're, you know, taking one of the big Teen Titans villains and doing him right, 
you got you already got it. You, you you don't have to do much after that. But I think that I go watch. Um, but I heard that the person who they got for Raven, they just you know isn't what most people would consider Raven. The same with Starfire, um, Beast Boy, kind of hit or miss just in his attitude, and that Robin is it, it almost feels more like they took a the Teen Titans go Robin and made him live action. Okay, I can understand that. But I mean, still, people are talking about it, and that's that's where their money is. Like, that's that's what I'm saying. That's where their money is. I tell them to do Green Lantern. As a TV series? Yeah. I think that'd be a great one to do. I think they should find some young 20-something-year-old actor who hasn't had too much behind his belt yet. Right. Um, and let him develop this character... And bring it to life, and I think that unfortunately, like nobody would remember Ryan Reynolds as uh, his failed attempt. Yeah. I do have to say, though, your Christmas decorations make you look like a giant cat. Oh, you mean my my garland around the? I thought I'd just add a little bit of touch. Yeah, me too. Because the rest of it is just very much like. One one moment. I'm going to show you. I'm going to grab one of them. So we took a bunch of like characters like this. This is Naruto in a Sage mode. And it's just bag clips. Um, Keys and I do a lot of blind bags um, at like five below or Target. So we have some Naruto ones. We have some My Hero. We have a My Hero Hello Kitty one. Um, I actually have a Yu-Gi-Oh one. And some Mario and video game ones. So that seems to sum up you and Keys. In a oh, 110%. We, we even, I, I, okay, I'm going to grab one more just because it, I, I think it kind of sums us up even better. John Stewart, not Hal. I can see that. Um, we got these ones. They just look like they say boom and pow and zap. We put the boom right next to um, a couple of her Bakugos that she has up there on the tree. Um, and then my little, it's a little Game Boy. It actually pushes the buttons. I have this one, my PlayStation. There's a PlayStation 4 or 5 on there. And then a couple of Super Nintendo controllers. That's pretty badass. That's pretty badass. I'd show you my Christmas tree, but I can't no, let the computer. Right. No, um, we have our main Christmas tree up front. It's more very traditional. I think the only two non-traditional things, well, three non-traditional things, is uh, Keys and I each got an ornament for each other. Um, she got me an NES controller looking one, and I got her one that's uh, Pikachu standing on a Pokeball. And then they had some uh, pigs and ballerina skirts that I absolutely thought was the cutest thing in the world. And I was like, yeah, these are going on my tree. See, Jamie and I do that every year where we pick out a new ornament. Um, and for the, like the last three years, I believe we've tried to get Jacob to pick out his own. And he always waits for like the last possible second. Talking to you, Jacob. Yep. Um, but this year I got, it looks like a little VHS tape of Jaws, like with the cover I open. You can yeah, see I, I, I saw that one at um, Walmart. You had mentioned it, and whenever we were looking, because that's where we found the NES one and the Pokemon one, we saw that one, and we were like, oh, it's the one he was talking about. That's really cool. Yep. Yes, this year, too. Yep. yep. He, he, he's going to miss it again this year, too. Nice. So good. Keys has one like that on our front tree that is of um, Little Mermaid. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's her favorite Disney film. Well, I think I think we uh, did a really good comeback here. It's been too long since we've done a show. It is, uh, and hopefully I can start doing more, or we might have to do them on different days or something like that because yeah. we work at the movie theater. Um, which is going really great. That is great to hear. 
but hopefully and we'll we'll have more coming we have a lot of things planned i know lena's uh just edging to get it back on with us yeah, yeah. um so we could do a couple of the you know spookier but real spooky not cinema spooky spooky so but uh i think we're gonna call it here and uh i thank you guys for coming back and seeing us yeah. uh by best of terms hope we're back next week yes all right bye guys the like subscribe all that junk don't forget that keep keep adding <laughs> bye y'all <laughs>